Hey, everybody. Welcome to the mediumship crew tonight. Um, we have got some interesting stuff and um, you may want to grab a seat because mm -hmm. we got some, like I said, some real exciting content. And normally we don't share this type of stuff and you'll understand in you know a few minutes why that is. Before, well, tonight's topic is going to be genealogy and mediumship and how the two go hand in hand. And before we get into that, we do have a couple of announcements. So first, we would like to welcome anybody new that's joining us. Um, we hope that you enjoy the topic and we hope that you come back and uh, visit with us some more because we have a lot of good topics coming up. And the second one is we have a contest for this selenite brick and um, we'll have instructions for that at the end for that raffle. Um, also, if you know anyone that would be interested in tonight's topic, it will be up on YouTube in a couple of days. We are gonna be doing some videos that are YouTube exclusive so please go to YouTube and, you know, we encourage you to hit the subscribe button. And just so you guys know that next week's topic is going to be forensics and mediumship. And we're going to have a couple people that I think you guys will like to hear from, including myself. We're all part of a group that does forensic work with law enforcement. And tonight we have no special guests. It is just the mediumship crew. So for those of you that haven't joined us before, Michelle, will you say hi, raise your hand. And Leanne. Hello. And George. Hey everyone. So that is the crew. And now we're gonna go right into tonight's topic, which is very interesting, but it's also very personal, which is why we don't normally share this stuff. So I have a family situation where my grandfather on my mother's side um, was killed in a car accident when my mother was seven. And for whatever reason, the two families just drifted apart fairly fast. So I knew nothing about him. And that always had uh, a nagging curiosity for me because you know, I was named after him. So I wanted to know more about him. And um, George decided to get me into doing some genealogy. Well, whoops, sorry about that. So what I did was I said, okay, but here's the second part of it. I also have no idea who my biological father is. I don't know a name. I don't know anything at all. And um, that's been tough. It's uh, been real tough. Have so, you, have, have, you um, have you ever looked into it before? No. Okay. No, I did not. And um, hold on a second. Is this one? I'm trying to make sure that I can see everybody. Uh, Michelle, do me a favor. Send me a quick thing in Facebook that says hello or something so I know that I'm on the right one. So this has uh, been a touchy subject um, because I've never known who my father is. I never thought I cared. And um, the long story is I had gotten a DNA kit from my heritage quite a while ago because I didn't have a father listed when I was looking for my grandfather's family. And a donor had done um, for kids that were adopted. And they sent me one because I didn't have a father listed. And I sat on it for a year before I did it. And then I sent it in. And uh, when I did send it in, 
it uh, it really didn't tell me much because I didn't know what I was reading. I didn't know um, how to look at it. I, I just really didn't know. So I didn't do anything with it. And then from there, um, George talked me into doing the 23 and Me. And um, we found my father. Um, with my grandfather, we found out that basically I'm the last of the Mohicans, so to speak. Uh, my sister and I and my niece. So now that you guys have the story, um, how mediumship has helped with this has been amazing. Um, it's been quite amazing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up to my students mm -hmm. and I don't know why I'm not seeing comments because I see the live, but I'm not seeing comments. So I'm going to click on it really quickly and I'm going to have to go to shut the volume off to see if I can see the comments. So hold on. Let's see, where's the volume? Okay, I think I'm seeing comments now. Am I? Yes, I think I am. Okay. So the floor is open. So people can ask me whatever they want. The crew can talk about the journey. And uh, I'll answer whatever. I'm going to be open and honest. Randy, did you want me to go ahead and kick it off? Maybe uh, whatever you guys want to do. I'm leaving it open and honest. Well, I, I think it's really important that, you know, we talk a little bit about how spirit, you know, can help in these situations, right? Right. Those things that seem so helpless or so hopeless, I should say, uh, don't need to be that way. I think if we ask for assistance and guidance, it, it comes to us right away um, and pretty quickly. I mean, we just experienced that with you. I mean, you went from zero to 100 in literally 48 hours, right? And that without divine guidance just doesn't, it just doesn't happen. It just doesn't. Um, and I can tell you a little bit about my own story. Um, so I, uh, when I was very young, I found out that my grandmother uh, was actually raised by her grandmother because uh, I was raised by mine. And she shared the story where she never met her mother and father. Uh, I didn't know that. And she said that they lived in New York somewhere. That's all I knew. So how Portuguese people ended up in New York, that's another story I don't understand. But <laughs> that's how it happened. So what I can say is um, it all started off with me wanting to have it happen. Uh, asking for it. And what happened was uh, uh, my father passed away and my sister and I were going through his house and through again, divine guidance, right? My sister looks at me and goes, I have a piece of paper. I think it's yours. And she said, it has 1884, which is the number of my home. That's my home address, the, the, the number of my house. And I go, oh, okay, thanks. You know? And so I grabbed it and opened it up. And what it was is I found out that my great grandfather was born in 1884. And that's how it all started. And uh, I come to find out that <laughs> kind of a crazy story. Uh, so my great grandmother left her the baby behind as a child. Um, she never met her mother. I mean, I'm sorry, she met her once. She never met her father and, and her brother. Um, and I ended up finding the whole family. And what they thought was a joke about a girl being left on an island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean was actually true. <laughs> and we all were connected. And we're all a big happy family now. But how that happened, it, and I was telling you, Randy, the other day, not only was it that address that, or that paper that came up with you know, the number of my house, 1884, again, the year my grandfather, great grandfather was born, but it also was interesting because when I was looking for uh, the information, I found out they changed their name from, to Marshalls, to Marshalls, which is very, again, not Portuguese at all. And um, I had asked Spirit to help me. I had asked also my family members, my ancestors, to, to help me in my, guy, my, my, my journey, right? And for those of you who live in California, I was driving down the highway, pulled over because traffic and something told me to call 411 and I did and I got the information and that was that was a hit that wasn't anything but a hit what I call a hit from spirit and communication and I found the number of the nearest cut the closest cousin I have and now today which is kind of funny we talk every day he is now my neighbor 
in Palm Springs <laughs> in Southern California, uh, where I spend some of my time. And uh, it's a big, happy family. But I think, again, you have to go back to, to being guided, trusting. Um, I think that a lot of times we doubt. But what happens is if we don't doubt and we do ask, it always comes back, you know, in a positive return. So that's how I figured it out. And I think with yours as well, Randy, I think, you know, asking for that help and, and going with our intuition, I think gut has a lot to do with it too. Um, I could give you many examples of that, but I don't want to hijack this, uh, this webinar or this uh, show. Well, the one thing I will say is with my <laughs> heritage, because 23andMe still has not come back yet. Right. And as rough as my heritage is, we were able to nail it down. And for somebody that had zero experience um, doing this, I was able to build not one, not two, not three, but four family trees Yeah. in, what was it, 48 four. hours? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, you the generations, it wasn't just one. Oh, it went back like four generations. So this was all by, by spirit working with me because I had no clue. I mean, I sure do now. Let me tell you. <laughs> I could probably do it in my sleep now. But it's, um, not easy. it's not easy. And here's the thing, which you accomplished in 48 hours. Take it from me. It took me three years. To, to, to get this whole thing kind of together, you know? And, uh, and here's the other thing I think, which we'll talk about in a bit, you know, be ready for the adventure because like Randy, you know, things are gonna pop up that you never even thought of. Like uh, for me, for example, I found out that I had a cousin whose DNA was extremely close to me, 17 segments out of 21, right? Whatever it was. And he was the product of a priest and a nun who, had a good night. And so, <laughs> or a bad one. Right? Or a bad one. How do you want to look at it? Right? Yeah, the Pope got involved. It was a big thing, but hey, it all worked out for friends. That's awesome. True story, by the way. And it is rough because when you're doing all this research, you'll hit a dead end and you'll think, oh, well, there's that. And no. then spirit would come to me and tell me, no go over here, do this research. No, go over there, do that research. And then all of a sudden it would open right back up again. Exactly. There you go. And, and it, was, it was crazy. So anyways, so that's the technical. And at what point then did you realize, like, because I know how you get, and you get caught up in the whole mediumship side of things sometimes. So at what point did you realize you were, were or were not having feelings about what was happening? <laughs> <laughs> is that directed towards me or towards Randy? Oh, that was towards me. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, okay. I, I had, know I how had all the candles out. I mean, I was praying. I mean, I had it all. I mean, you should see the altar. It was amazing. I mean, Randy did not go without without protection. I'll tell you that. The, I know how you get that. Oh, that was directed to me. <laughs> okay. That was like wow. How you sometimes <laughs> how you get how you get excited about things sometimes when you um, when you're researching. So. Okay, so what was the question? Um, and by the way, we've had a lot of highs out there. Hi, you guys. I see all of you saying uh, hello. Okay, well, let's start with this. What made you decide to do this now? Again, just, just George taught you and George talking about it and him saying, you should really try it because he's so into genealogy. and You know, that's an interesting question. I've asked myself that several times over the last two days. I don't have an answer. Well, maybe it was George it was said something you. and, you know, again, it had to have been spirit because I've not been open to it. And all of a sudden it was like, oh, okay, yeah, let, let's do this, whatever, you know. And I've been sitting here thinking, how did this start? I've been thinking that for the last couple of days. I haven't the slightest clue. What? triggered it yeah I, mean, I kind of remember you guys talking about it one night and and then, then George yeah boom all of a sudden it was like oh you yeah, know like oh ooh, I like that oh I'll do it I'll look it up I love that <laughs> he got all excited all right so let's get into the good stuff because I know you guys had questions and I, all of you out there that are watching 
please go ahead and ask whatever questions you you may have whether I, I have a genealogy or mediumship i have a question for you randy too is because i know i've shared and i'll share with, with the rest of you guys um an experience that i had but i'm curious now that you're moving towards where you, you believe you know you've identified your father the next step is you know do you approach the family how do you approach the family um you know you, you go with your your gut on it and um also you're gonna have the the interesting part of you reveal the fact that you're a medium yeah oh hi i'm your daughter you never knew about the you know the crazy medium yeah yeah <laughs> right you know i mean that those are valid like how are you going to approach that daughter and i talk to dead people yeah well that's an interesting question because i don't know yet i i'm sifting through this uh I'm not going to lie to you guys. This has been an emotional roller coaster ride on uh, multiple levels because number one, I found out that my grandfather's line is done with us. Um, I was hoping that I would have, you know, some cousins or, you know, second cousins or whatever that I could talk to and find out more about that. So that was kind of like squashed. Um, as far as my father goes um i've gone 57 years without one another interesting tidbit i was born to two women and i was raised i feel that i'm happy um do i really want to change any of that because if i did open that door obviously it's going to change something Nothing stays the same, right? right. Um, and then how do you walk in to a, well, a door, a phone, a, a Facebook messenger, whatever, and say, oh, hi, um, I'm the daughter you never knew you had 57 years after the fact, mm -hmm. you know, being a product of the 60s. Um, and then again, you know, what I do for, for my work. Right. Um, you know, it's all over Facebook. Right. Randy Sands, anybody, medium. The first thing they can do is Google your name and oh shit. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, so there's no hiding it, even if I wanted to, which I don't. Uh, right. I gave that up a long time ago. Uh, I came out of the closet twice, being gay <laughs> and being a medium. <laughs> I got one down. <laughs> <laughs> no more doors to go through in your house, honey. Right. You. <laughs> so, you know, and the other thing is, is if you do approach them, you know, there's always a chance that they could say, you know what, I'm not interested. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, I, I thought about that too. Now that I would be a-okay with. I'd be, okay, great. You just showed me that you know, I really didn't miss anything for 57 years. Mm -hmm. You know, you showed me your character. Um, but I do have the right to know a little bit about my identity and my history. So, you know, you could at least give me some of that, some of those questions answered. Mm -hmm. So anything else? I think we, I think we have a question, am I right? Do we? I think we do. Um. I didn't see it yet. I see a lot of hellos. Alyssa McKeever, is that who you think in the? Alyssa, yeah. Curious. I had a reading the other day done, and I was told that my great aunt was coming through to speak with me. Great aunt with the name starting with a B. I don't recall or know. Wait a minute. Oh, okay, I see that. Um great aunt of mine that has passed on that matches that description hmm. but i also do not know my father's mother's side of the family okay here's something that i found out in doing this i think? feel very abnormal because i have had the same name my entire life <laughs> <laughs> now in the process of doing this i can't tell you how many people have changed their name my grandmother who I knew as Loretta, was born Laura, L-A-U-R-A. My mother, 
I never knew that her birth name spelling was different than what I've always known it as. My great aunt was born Sadie. I always knew her as Shirley. Um, I had an uncle that had one last name and it became something completely different. And in building the four different trees, what I've come to find out is that was very commonplace for people to just change their names. So that could possibly be why you, well, what's that? Says, she says her father never got to meet her mother after he was born. So do you think this may have something to do with it and genealogy would help me determine this great aunt? Absolutely. Probably, yes, yeah. yes. I mean, there's never a hundred percent guarantee, but absolutely. And what I would tell everybody to do is do a 23 and me kit because it's by far the most accurate. I, I did the research. And then if you can't find it from there, then, you know, you can hire somebody that can help you. I mean, George and I can probably help you, but you know, the programs are expensive. We, we would have to, you know, yeah. charge and the time there's a lot of time that goes into it. Um, but there's advantages to being a medium and doing this as well, you know, um, not just with Randy's experience that she's going through, but, you know, I went through an experience that was very similar uh, with an uncle that my, my grandmother mentally um, was, was coming down with dementia pretty badly, had to go into a nursing home. Long story short, we were cleaning out her home and I kept getting drawn to her, her jewelry box. It was like a little, kind of like a jewelry box that was on her dresser. And the whole time, I mean, we're cleaning the whole house, but I just, I had to go to that jewelry box. And I, I went there and I found a letter that my grandmother uh, had been writing to a son that she had, she gave up to, you know, yeah. for adoption. And nobody knew about this. However, I found out, I approached my mom and um, when my mom was still alive, and I said, you know, mom, I found this. What the hell is this? And she said, listen, I promised your great grandmother that I wouldn't do anything or say anything until after her mom, my grandmother, had passed away. And I, it kind of made me mad a little bit because I had this, this spirit was telling me, you, you, this is not okay. You, you've got to do something about this before, That's you know, right. my grandmother passes. And so I took it upon myself, which pissed off some of my family, but I reached out to my uncle. And come to find out, my uncle, the child that was doing it for adoption, had a relationship with my grandmother and had it for many years. So my grandmother had told him, do not ever approach your other siblings about this. Do not tell them that I speak to you or I will cut you off. Um, and he was told not to approach anybody in our family after she passed away. Well, years later, you know, we, we developed a relationship with him. I have a great relationship with him now. He's an amazing person. Had I not intervened at that point, my mom would have passed away before my grandmother died. They would have never met. So, you know, like I said, the, the mediumship, the things that urge you, uh, you know, those gut instincts, it, go with it. There's a reason. Why then, out of all the time, same with why Randy's story now. I mean, there's a reason for it. You might not know it why now, but in a few years, it might make more sense. Exactly. And my father is up in his mid-80s. Right. And he's still alive. Mm -hmm. um, and the way that we found this was because every time I was doing research, Spirit would, would say, yeah, no, not go this way. And go this way and go this way. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's exactly how it happened. So let's see, we have another question. Amy girl, not sure if ever talked about this. I wanna know when someone dies, what happens first? Well, mm -hmm. the first thing that's gonna happen is the soul's gonna leave the body. Um, but even before that happens, isn't there some truth to the, you know, you're kind of coming in uh -huh. and people start to see loved ones and people they Oh, they'll, they'll start courting you mm -hmm. from the other side. They'll start courting you like, yeah, come on. We have a party over here. Let's go. We have a family reunion. <laughs> you know, right. Amy just lost her dad yesterday. Who oh. did? Amy. Sorry. Oh, that's, that's he, sad. He was sick it's for just, a while. Well, just know you didn't lose him. All that you've lost is the physical part. He's still around. And Absolutely. if you clear your mind, you're going to feel his presence. She, she later on said about, um, they went to pick out his urn today. 
and um, the one they picked was uh, crafted in Boylan Springs, which was where he fished his whole life. And she said, was that him telling me he was yep. okay? Not yep. a coincidence. That's, him. That's not, not a coincidence. He's fishing. Yeah, he went fishing. He went fishing, right? <laughs> But this is this is so important what she just said and i think that that's what the end was just talking about is when you do see these signs don't think it's a coincidence these things just don't happen per chance i mean they might but i doubt it i mean that's a pretty big connection right there and for you Absolutely. to be you know, your father's urn and it's made in a place where he fished all his life i'd say buy the urn i mean if it's not yeah. the craziest color in the world but or maybe <laughs> like that i don't know but i mean you know, but yeah, that's a sign. I mean, there you go. That, that is beyond, that, that's exactly what I was talking about in the beginning of the, of the, when we started this is that, you know, 1884, for example, you know, again, back to that example. I mean, that's not a coincidence. These no. things happen for a reason. And this is what guides us. And this is the divine playing a huge role in our lives to just help us uncover what we need to uncover while we're here. So I would say by the urn. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, that's the one. And there's something that I'm looking for for her right now. Um, because there is a very good book. I have done book clubs, online book clubs on this many times. And I will do it again. But if I had somebody that just passed, I would get this book. That's a good book. The Blue <laughs> Island. Okay, this book is an amazing book, and it will tell you everything that happens. And I can tell you this much, he's in a good place. Yeah. She did have a quick valid question as well. She said, is he mad at me because the family went against his wishes with no service and not burying him and that they cremated him? And, and I've had this question posed to me before, and I, you know, I have to say right away, you know what? Even when we're on earth, I feel like our plans for ourselves, our burial, what we want with our body um, is one thing. After we're gone, from my, my understanding is, you know what, you don't, you can care less at that point. The, the burial and the cremation and whatever you decide to do is for the living. It's not for the dead. You honor them and they know they're honored without that procession. Um, so no, we, the short answer is I'm, I'm sure he is not mad. Yeah, he's totally not mad. Exactly. No, no. And, and my grandmother, who I loved very, very dearly, um, she had very specific ideas of how she wanted her funeral. She had paid for it in advance, had all the arrangements. I mean, I mean, it was like, she really thought this out. And she wanted me to get up there and say a lot of lovely things about her. And I will tell you, when the time came, I couldn't do it. Yeah. I, at the funeral, my mother turned to me and she said, do you want to say anything, you know, about your grandmother? And I said, no. I just couldn't do it. I was too, it was too much for me to keep it together. And I did, because I think I was in denial because I was the only one not crying. And they all thought when she died, they would have to put me in, a, in an institution. Um, I was the only one not crying and I just couldn't do it. Now, does she have any ill feelings about that? I guarantee you not. She knows, she's on the other side. So she knew exactly what was going on. And you know, once they leave their body, they really don't care. Well, and I think if he was mad at her, he probably wouldn't have directed them to get an urn that was made in Boiling Springs. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, but I, I think that, you know, I think, you know, when you pass away, and this is my understanding and what I've gotten through, you know, the messages that I receive, is that we have a one way of thinking when we're on this earth. The minute we cross over, there's a whole set of understanding that comes with passing over that just yeah. kind of eliminates some of the stuff that we might believe here. Exactly what Leanne said, right? Once yeah. we get over there, we're, we recognize that whether you're burned or you're buried or whatever, it really doesn't matter. Because again, that's just a vessel. And I don't think he would be mad for that at all. I mean, you and, know, I mean, and, and here's the thing, you know, these things are very costly. I mean, 
I, I just, I'll be honest, I can open up about this. I paid for my own. I just recently paid for my own and my husband almost killed me. You know, <laughs> you know he was like, why the hell is there like $20,000 missing? I'm like, well, I'm going to have an incredible party. <laughs> an incredible I'm party. Incredible. Maybe they ain't cheap. You know? Yeah, they are not cheap, you know? And so these are the things that, again, with passes. Well, it is California, right? It is California, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know. But I, again, I'm going to be laying in state for seven days, so please understand there's a lot of makeup involved. <laughs> 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 going to pack your house. Are you going to have some wardrobe <laughs> changes? Wardrobe <laughs> changes. I mean, why is it good for Aretha and not me? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> you guys, George is a little bit touched in the head. I'm not going to tell you he's not. <laughs> But, but the genealogy part, you know, I truly encourage anybody that, you know, I'm not the only one. And that's why I decided to, to do this is because I'm not the only one that has missing segments. And um, it, it was kind of hard especially when you have more than one missing segment because you just you know I, I felt like I kind of went through life just not really knowing um, a whole chunk of me so to speak yeah. so if you don't know I really encourage you to do 23 and me and I encourage you to do it very soon because they are going to from what I understand they are going to change some of their testing practices. Um, I guess it's not going to be as in depth. I'm not quite sure exactly what that means, but I do know that they are planning on making some changes. So if you don't know, I encourage you not only to take the test, but to do it, you know, relatively soon. And you know, something that I was just thinking about it is, um, you know, like I, I was very curious and asked Randy about how are you going to approach the family? Are you going to approach the family? And I have heard people in the past say as well, you know, my mom didn't know her father while she was alive. And she said, you know, he's probably gone anyway. And, and she, really, I think it came down to being afraid of being rejected. Um, but I think it's important to know as well that with a medium's help, if you did find that family member, and say, unfortunately, you always wanted to meet your birth mother and she's passed, you can develop a relationship with that person on the other side. You know what I mean? With, with help of a medium, they can bring through information. They can help point you, okay, your mom's gone, but let me help give you some more information to keep finding, um, you know, other members of your family or different directions to go. You know, that's, that's one of the beautiful things about being a medium. Um, so I, I hope that doesn't let anybody stop them, you know, worrying about somebody being passed or not wanting that relationship with them. Well, even if somebody has passed, which I had assumed my father probably had, um, just because I'm 57, you know, so, and he's not, but I had figured that he probably had other children mm -hmm. and, you know, I could ask questions. If nothing else, I could ask questions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if somebody does reach out and they they get faced with rejection, the first thing I would say is, okay, I understand, you know, you, you don't want this, but I have the right to know my identity and my history. So at least give me that right. and have a list of questions prepared that you want to ask of them mm -hmm. about your, you know, your history, your lineage, what, what, what have you, um, have I done that? No. <laughs> Over time, what time that comes, right? I mean, you can't. Right. Well, I'm still processing, you know, right. I'm, I'm not going to lie. And sometimes I, well, at least five times today, I was doing things and I sat down and I said, What's going on with you? For the love of God, you're a medium. Why are you like having to process this? This should, this should come easy, talk to spirit. And, um, and my guides kind of laughed at me like, yeah, but it's still a process. And the reason I haven't done the list, I'll be honest with you, is because I haven't decided whether or not to approach them. 
And that comes with time. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a woman that raised, you know, that raised me. I, I have my biological mother and then I have the one that I call my dad because people have to be able to follow my conversations. Otherwise, it's you just said your mom this and now you're saying your mom. No, because that's the other one. So the one that we'll, we'll refer to as my dad um, was like that figure. You know, so there's a part of me that feels like, well, if I do that, am I, you know, lessening her part and raising me, you know, there's like a little guilt thing there. Um, do I want to know him? What if he is some crazy person or what if he's some, you know, less than honorable kind of guy? Do I want to know that in my background? You know, so there's, I will do some investigating. I will tell you this much into him and his past. You know, because they have all these checks that you can do now. I will definitely do some of that before I make a decision to approach. Um, you know, the last thing I want to find out is I'm the daughter of a serial killer or some crazy, <laughs> you know, a priest that had a night with a nun, you know, <laughs> like in George's case. <laughs> um, and seriously, I mean, you got to be ready for anything. I mean, anything and everything is possible. So you just got to be open to that. And that's what I keep thinking, you know, am I ready for what could be not so great? Right. Now, on the other side of the coin, everything could be spectacular. Mm -hmm. You know, he could, he could be this amazing guy that's done all these amazing, he could want to pull a uh, Pulitzer Prize, you know, who knows? You know, or a got, Nobel Peace Prize, or you know, who knows? You know, we and you know, and, and on my side too, you know, my uncle did end up finding uh, my mom's father. Unfortunately, my mom passed, and uh, he's also passed, or else I would have definitely reached out to him. Um, but the cool thing about it was, you know, that was a little bit of a bummer. But he, you know, has uh, I have some cousins, and I wasn't, you know, I, was, I wasn't close to any cousins really when we were growing up um, due to stupid family things you know and uh not being really raised together with them so it's really cool i you know i have a cousin now and um you know she i haven't met her in person but you know like i said so there's always i feel like always a twist to something sad so it was sad but it's like oh cool now i got you know someone else about my age that we can relate to and i can still find out information about my grandfather through them you know so even if well, really i did it's, it's, well. It's interesting because I did make contact with one lady and I'm not mentioning names because, you know, I, I want to maintain people's privacy, but I did make contact with one lady and we chatted for about 45 minutes and it was amazing. And she is definitely a cousin. I haven't connected all the dots yet to find out exactly where she fits. Um, but we were chatting and I really like her. And, you know, I definitely want to have more conversation with her and get to know her. Um, when the 23 and me comes back, we will know exactly where that is because she has also done one. Cool. So we'll be able to connect all those dots that, you know, because I've done a lot of the groundwork, like we said, in 48 hours, I did four family trees. But that doesn't mean that every single dot connects. You know, there's still a few dots. And, um, you know, using mediumship, I have a, a pretty good idea. But, um, you know, it's not 100%. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go just on mediumship. I also want the scientific right. data as yeah, well. I mean, it would be one thing if you didn't have that option, but yeah. you have that option, so you might as well be sure. Yeah. You know, right. Uh, so there, I have one quick question, um, or I wanted to answer a question. There's a, a gal by the name of Tammy Ferraro who, uh, who asked a question, and I think I could answer it. She talked about uh, someone who committed suicide, I believe was her... Father. Where are you guys seeing these? Why am I not seeing these? Um, are you under live video comments? Yeah. Oh, I see. It's okay. It's down farther. I missed it. 
So, so, you know, Tammy, one thing I want to tell you, you know, cause you're, I, I keep seeing the word discouraged, um, you know, you're feeling like you're a little lost and so on. And I'm going to tell you that, that I felt the same way um, with my family that I found in Briarcliff Manor, New York, right? The, you, kind of the, just to go back again to what we're all saying is sometimes when it looks hopeless, all you need to do is just ask, you know, ask that person for the answers, ask that spirit to help you, ask your spirit guides to help you. For example, I was in, um, I was at a dead end. I couldn't figure out how to find the rest of my family that was living, not the ones that were dead, the ones that were living. And one day out of the blue, it just came to my mind. I'm like, well, and it just, it just came to me. I was like, graves, graves, you, you get a deed to a grave. You own a grave. So people own graves. So there's a name there. So what I did is I called the cemetery and I said, well, who owns this grave? You know, who, who, who's the one that paid for the entombment? And they gave it to me. And that's where I found my family. Now, would I have known that off the back? Like, no, I would have never thought that. So when you think it's just, it's the end, it really is. And you just got to be open, keep it calm, keep it cool, stay connected and grounded and just ask for help. And it does come because again, how would I have ever guessed that mm -hmm. ever? And, and that's how I found the family that today is my neighbor, the neighbor in Palm Springs, et cetera. So stay positive. Don't get discouraged. Be inspired, if anything. She also, she also said in here about, she gets the feeling that she had her genealogy done. Um, the name's changed? Is that what it was? Wait a second here. I lost my, I cannot find any history on him except his death certificate. And when I had my genealogy done, there is no one with his last name in the testing. I have the feeling he may not have been their actual father and possibly why he committed suicide, but not sure. Can you tell well, me? Well, that's, that stuff can be found out. Yeah. That can, stuff can be, well, it's a lot of research. Is, yeah, that's what I was wondering. If, if would the, I guess, would the 23andMe help with that? Somehow? It depends. If she said there's no DNA connection and nobody else is tested, then no, then it's, then it's a matter of going in and doing the research. Okay. You know, I don't know if, if I don't know about 23 me, but I know on Ancestry.com, which, which mine is through, you know, you can then reach out to, you know, a lot of the information we got about our family members, things like that. I found out my great grandfather that was so close to really isn't even biologically um, a great grandfather. I didn't know that. Um, but you can find that out through, then emailing back and forth with other people, getting some of those stories from, from some of the other people that were in the family. It's amazing what some of them know, but don't, don't necessarily say until, uh, you know, until you kind of pry a little bit or ask a little bit. So, you know. And it may, I mean, maybe she can do like George said and find out who paid for the, for yeah, the. Um, there's different ways to go about it. I mean, the one yeah. thing, that, and, and the thing with name changes, I mean, it's very common back in the like, you know, like the 20s and 30s, there was a lot of immigrants who came here to try to assimilate. My family, again, for example, moved into a, a, a very higher end Jewish neighborhood and they were Portuguese immigrants who didn't even speak English, right? So they became the marshals. You know, Francisco became Don, Donald. And, and my, you know, the only one that kept his original name was my great grandfather was Manuel. But then they changed their names to the thing that was close. For example, uh, the name Carneiro in Portuguese means lamb. So a lot of people became the lambs, right? That's actual. That's an actual case in my family. Uh -huh. um, yeah, uh, you know, like um, Sadie was a very popular one for immigrants as well. That was a very, very popular one um, because there was no translation for certain ones. So they do like the closest thing that sounds to it. Um, so there was an assimilation thing. Also, there's some words just don't translate. You know, and people have to pick Betty, you know, or Rose, <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, no, it just kind of happens. I'm going to interrupt you guys because there's one I'm seeing here that um, I really want. There, actually, there's two here that I really want to address, and one is from Sharice. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, she was 23 and me, and was very satisfied at the very least know her ethnicity um, and doesn't know any of her biological family. So my question is, did you not find any in the 23andMe? Were you adopted? Um, 
you know, there, I have a lot of questions there. Did you find out and you chose not to reach out? There's, there's a lot of questions there. And um, then there was also Allison. Allison, brick walls are hard. Um, and, and I get it. And that's where mediumship for me really made the difference because every time I hit a brick wall, spirit just guided me. I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I was sitting right here at this very desk. I would hit a brick wall and I just was like, oh, and I was ready to just walk away from the whole thing. And spirit would say, Hey, go over here and do this research right over here. Go over here, do this research. And it just opened it right back up again. Yeah. Um, you know, from what I'm being told by several people I know that do genealogy, you know, to build four family trees in 48 hours is near impossible. So and I don't know either, but I know that 23 me is, is, is one of the more popular ones, but some of the, you know, obviously there's 23 me, there's ancestry.com, there's yeah. a couple different ones. Does anybody know which one is supposed to be the, yeah. like, some of, they were going to start to link up to them. If you didn't find any biological family, don't let it stop you there. You she know, did. did. She, she found that? a distant cousin. She was adopted. Okay. Hold on a second. I have a post-it over that. You know, one... one uh, she didn't reach out yet. Oh, good. I'm glad I pronounced it correctly. <laughs> um, you know, think about it. Think about whether you want to reach out. And mm -hmm. through the research, you know, it's very possible to find out direct relatives yeah, yeah. that's it's what you want because it's they know the story is you know it's it's a lot of research um it's a lot of work it's a lot of hours be ready for like some major sit down sessions and, trying and to it's, a, it it's out. a lot of money yeah you know right. because you have to have access to all these different sites which you know we now have george and i but <laughs> um yeah woo yeah um but i would i would um encourage you to really think about whether you want to reach out or not if you're adopted it might be good to have some some questions answered um let's see allison yeah it, i wish they would all link up well in, in that they group, do yeah. they do allison it's just the ways to go about the research right you'll hit dead ends but then there's other ways to do research and that's why i said george and i are members of so many different sites now and it's it's not cheap and that's why um some of these top genealogists charge what they do thousands yeah i mean i would never charge that but you know they do and it's because everything is expensive and it's a lot of time mm -hmm. and when you hit a brick wall you have to go around the you know well and you and sometimes these brick walls are temporary right because here's the thing like for for me you know i broke through certain things but then i found that you know my family's from the azores if you guys know where that's at and you know i went to the azores and then all of a sudden i find out there's a magical vault with all the records sitting right there. And that's what I do in my summers. I go there and I sit in this vault and they already know what I want to eat for lunch and they bring it to me. And, and I sit there and I, I read these books and you, it just, you find the grandfather. And that's what, so the good thing is, if your family's from another country, a lot of times records are kept differently. So for example, in Portugal, when you're born, your birth certificate is not only your birth certificate, it also becomes when you become baptized, when you take communion, when you're com confirmed, when you get married, when your child is born, and when you die, it's one document. Wow. So if you didn't know that, you would think you hit a brick wall, but once you hit that, you just, you know, you just won the lotto, you know, because now you know who the grandfather was, and then you go back, and you go back, and you go back, and yeah, there's a lot of math. There's, you got to look at, you know, a thing you'll probably learn of is centimorgans, right? Those are a good way of figuring things out. That's how Randy did hers, for example. So that's how close of a relationship you are with these people. 
And there's a database, uh, which if you don't know how to do it, it's really complicated, but it's called GEDmatch. And a lot of times uploading your raw data there is really good because that is, you talked about it all going to one place. That's the one place where everybody goes, uh, at least here in the US and in most parts of the country or the world. Um, so, but again, if you don't know mathematics or science or cells and this, and that, it gets a little complicated. I mean, who knows about centimorgans? I mean, well, I did, you know, but now I do. <laughs> and the interesting thing about right, centimorgans yeah. is that you share about 3,400 with your yeah. parents. And a twin is about the same. You know, um, Siblings, if I remember right, are about 1,700. And oh, so I'm way cuter than my brother and sister, so it's got to be more than that. And grandparents are about 1,700. You have more than they do. Yeah. Now, get this with that. So we found out who my father was based on 106 centimorgans. Yeah. And that's, that's what you need to triangulation and so on, like what Randy's saying is the hard stuff, right? Right, because you have to figure out the research because you have to go up trees, around trees, back down trees. You know, it gets, it gets a little crazy. Um, and that's why I built out four separate trees because in order to figure out who this was, I had to go through all these trees make all the connections, find out all the kids, go through other research to make sure that those are actually the ones because people change their names. And I mean, it was craziness. My wife will tell you that for two days, she didn't see me. <laughs> and she, and, and we're on lockdown. So we were in the same house. <laughs> Larry would be like, wait, <laughs> I tried to find some more people. I know, right? My wife is like, oh, she's off on her thing. Just... All right, whatever. <laughs> I forget well, and, and the other thing I, I think would be an interesting way to look at brick walls or, you know, kind of delays in finding things out is it could be a way of spirit just. It's not the time. You're not yeah, ready, you're not ready yeah. for it or you're not. It's just, yeah, it's not the time for it yet. But another are, thing. They are yet. Another yeah. thing that could cause a delay is you may have to wait for somebody else to get a bug up there behind to do a DNA test. Right. Because what I've found out in this process is that a lot of people do DNA tests just to find out their ethnic background. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. But from that, you can find your matches. Yeah. You can also find things you, you know, that just that reminded me of a customer of mine. I'm obviously not going to give any names, but uh, about two winters ago, her her mother had passed away. Her father has been gone for, for many years. And I, I believe there was five siblings in her family. And um, they were raised as Italian. They believe they were Italian. But one of the siblings decided to buy everybody for Christmas, like a, a, a DNA kit. You know what I mean? Just they, That was a big kit. Christmas present. You, right? There, yeah. And you got to wonder why did you, did they suspect that some didn't Amazingly, have the same parents or what was that about? <laughs> right. That's Supposedly not. Right there. Supposedly they did not. They did know that one of the, the children was from a first marriage. So um, they, they knew that, but the other ones were supposedly all from the same marriage. So now mind you, both parents were, were gone. She submitted the DNA test and two out of those four siblings came back with different fathers. They didn't know it. They had no clue. You know, and it, it, of course, at first rocked her world, rocked her brother's world. He's like, shit, I gave her this thing for Christmas, you know. And, um, Be careful what can of worms <laughs> you're willing to open. Right? But it did nope. turn out to be a good thing. You know, it was, it, it was, you know, it was something that she needed on her path. That she needed it. And, you know, and honestly, medically wise speaking as well, I can, I can speak for my own family and say, you know what, even if, I keep thinking about Sharice and her situation, you know, you were notified of that relation through that ancestry 23 me whatever site it was so was that other person um and keep that in mind you know that other person knows as well they might be intimidated to reach out to you as well um you know like i said a simple message just saying hi i see we have a connection and let and just let it sit see if they come back you know um 
just I just don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out. Um, but like you said, this other person now, she's met her other family. Some of the medical connections have, have made sense. Um, you know, I, I really urge people to do that. There were so many holes on our side of the family that, you know, um, maybe helped with some of my, my nephew's treatment. Maybe they didn't. But you know what? It was better to know it than not know it. So. Yeah. And I'll tell you this, why I have not reached out after we found my father, why I've not reached out to him yet. I will tell you that there were several people that I reached out to and let me tell you, they were all amazing. Um, they all called me. They all were very nice. They were very willing to help. The one gentleman that actually was the one that helped crack this whole thing was 84 years old. And he was able to give me a whole lot of information mm -hmm. um, that really narrowed it down. Mm -hmm. So, again, I almost wondered too, like for for you know family members like that that are eighty seven or eighty four, because of the way our society is, and so we don't really value their stories and their you know we don't go and listen to them talk. So I wonder sometimes when you contact somebody like that and they're so willing to help and stuff if it's because of that you know that they want to share that information they want to share the stories and the information and you have to be patient i will tell you because sometimes they really have to go back in their memory banks and you know it's like i tell people when we start off as kids our brains are are pretty much empty and we start learning and we have all these files and we all, could you imagine how many files are in the filing cabinet when you're up in your eighties? Oh shit, I'm screwed now. I can't <laughs> I get to that point. I'm like, oh, and with a little wine, I might be able to access a few, but. <laughs> I mean, well, you know, I had to be very patient because they have to think. Yeah. They have to, you know, think, okay, so so-and-so was with, married to so-and-so. And those people had these kids. And this aunt was married to, um, oh yeah, she was married to so-and-so and they had these kids. You have to be very patient with them. We were with in the 60s, uh -huh, I'm just saying. Uh -huh. I wasn't around then, but I'm just saying, I've heard, I've heard stories, so. Well, you know, and this is the thing too, remember that a lot of situations, there's a couple things. But number one is, you know, Randy talks about being open to, uh, you know, anything possible, right? So I always tell people, when you go into this genealogy thing, you know, be attached to nothing <laughs> to, and just be open to everything. Because I, I, when I went into it, I'm telling you, I was like, there's no bad. I would have heard of it. Da, 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 da. Well, let me tell you, it, it, it was unbelievable. I mean, if I were to hear to tell you some of the stuff that I found out, I, I even I feel like I'm lying sometimes when I'm talking about it. I can't even believe it. Like you know, you know. But 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 so be atta be attached to nothing and be open to everything. And also remember that there could also be a lot of shame around certain things, right? Um, I have a woman who contacted me and said, you know, I just want I don't want to know who my mom is, but just tell me if I'm going to live a long life. Well, how would I know? You know. I mean, I, I, you know, I, and, and I, and there was something, I found it like my life mission to, to figure that out. And I asked spirit, I'm like, let me help this woman. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to help her. I want to, I want to bring her some peace. Mm -hmm. Come to find out my great grandfather had a sister who lived in San Francisco, whose daughter ended up at a convent to become a nun. Come to find out she was with the, was with the Catholic organization that took in young ladies who were pregnant and then helped put their children up for adoption. She was one of, she was, she was that person. And come to find out all those people live to be like 98 years old, hundred years old. I sent her all the pictures. I sent a picture of her mom. She has no interest in talking to her mother, um, but she's just so happy she's gonna have a long life with her grandchildren. And you know what? That's okay. There you go, you know? So, you know, and I think the other one that I think, uh, one more weird story, cause I think these are fun. Um, the other one that I think is pretty crazy is, um, uh, I had a gentleman contact me on 23andMe and he looks just like my family. I mean, I'm looking at this guy. I'm like, God, he's part of something here, you know? And uh, I'm like, well, so what's the deal? He's all, well, my mother's a lesbian. Um, and my mother actually 
you know, bought sperm. So was and mine. I am from the sperm bank. <laughs> Yours too. And, uh, you know, and, and then I was like, oh my God, are you serious? What? Who would have done that in my family? And, you know, I, we found out. And, he went, when, and then when we approached him, he just looked at me and he was like, he just walked away. He just couldn't. You need grocery it. money at some point. Or, you know, yeah, I mean, he was it, like, but... I mean, he, you know, he, he likes to eat. He's a big boy. So, I, yeah, that could have been it. Yeah, could have been it. So you know, shout out to uh, Christy Perry Kingland. Yes, I saw that, that her sister, <laughs> they found her sister right before uh, her father passed away. And that I'm finding is very common. And uh, in my case, if I do reach out, it would probably be very similar. I mean, he's up in his 80s. So what's the likelihood that he's going to live much longer? Um, and I know of another case where I was saying that I found somebody that, that's uh, a cousin. We'll know the exact connection shortly. Um, there was another sibling. The father had always questioned whether he had, and she showed up a year before he passed. Wow. That's spirit right there. Yeah. Tell me that's not. There's a reason. The divine, I'm telling you. You know, and especially those of us are, that are of a certain age, you know, hell, I grew up in the late 70s and early 80s. That was my, my time, right? Well, we thought we were wild, you know, Studio 54 and the whole disco scene and whatnot. Let me tell you, the 60s? Oh, honey. <laughs> oh, honey. I was born in the wrong decade. I don't know that I'd want to be for the 60s because there was a whole lot going on in the 60s. And there's a whole bunch of us out there. And I guarantee you, there's even a whole bunch of us that think they know their parents. Yep, they know. Oh, yeah. But, you know, I, I, I know my family could have been on Springer several times. Yeah, you know. But, you know, there's a story mommy's baby, daddy's maybe. <gasps> oh, I never heard that one. Can you repeat that? <laughs> Mommy's baby, daddy's that maybe. Baby. Like the Maury show, you got to run up to the monitor and be like, look at his ears. Look at his eyes. You got my daddy's nose. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you guys oh always God. do that to me when I'm drinking. You know, you want me to like Sorry. spit all over my, my <laughs> electronics or something. Fill it out. So and imagine it, I have so an uncle and family that didn't know me and they didn't run. Can you imagine? Listen, look at Tammy said, yes, the 60s rocked. I don't know, girl. I don't know that I could have survived the 60s, the 80s, the 70s, and 80s were a lot. Right? Oh, my God. I'm trying to see your hair in the 80s, Miss, Miss Sands. Make love, not yeah. war. What's that? Make love, not war. What did you say, George? Yeah, he, he I wanted to see your hair in the 80s. Uh, did you have the 80s for a cut? Oh, I had, I had the mullet thing going on. Yeah, she had a mullet. I had a mullet too. Uh, the 80s? Yes. I was born in 80s. You had big hair. You had big hair, didn't you, Leanne? Leanne? I was born in 80s, yeah. I'm a baby. I, well, I won't tell you how old I am. I'm getting too old. <laughs> so let's, let's see if anybody else has any questions about, you know, people they don't know or about genealogy, how to track them, anything like that that we can answer. Because There's if so not, many, then right? we might start wrapping up. Did you say? I thought, okay. Tammy, thank you for coming in. And we hope to see you soon. Uh, next week, we're doing forensic and mediumship. Mm -hmm. So what we will do is we will have, I'm part of a group called Impartial Witness. And we work on cases with law enforcement and with families. One of the founders, who's a, a good friend of mine, will be on as well as uh, Stacy Martin, who's been on before with us because she's also part of it. And we'll talk about impartial witness and we'll take questions, um, you know, regarding forensics and mediumship, you know, missing persons, murder cases, things like that. If you guys enjoyed this video, we encourage you to like and share the page again. There's going to be some videos that are going to be made specifically for YouTube. 
So I encourage you guys to go over to YouTube to the Randy Sands channel oh. and, um, you know, subscribe. There's a, there's a button. Actually, it's a red word down at the bottom that says subscribe. And if you click it, it'll let you know when there's new videos. Um, I had talked to you guys about uh, a contest for the selenite brick. So the way yeah. that that works is you have to share the video from the fourth, which was last week's, this week's, and next week's. And also, you have to tell us how many times the word crew was used in each one. What's the word? Crew. What was it? Crew cut? <laughs> Not crew. Not grew. <laughs> crew. Crew. <laughs> crew. And yes. also, if you guys want to stay on top of classes that I'm doing, workshops, I'm going to be doing a workshop here very shortly on uh, meeting your spirit guides. And we also have the online spiritual book club. So if you want to stay on top of that, Cracking the spiritual code.com is a good place for that. We did just recently start a book club, a spiritual book club that is actually awesome. And that is on the dynamic laws of prosperity because we can all use more prosperity in our lives. And that one started April 28th. So it's still in the beginning stages. So if anybody wanted to join that one, you still can. And with the contest, you have to post everything on next week's video clip so that we can go down and, and find it. But it has to be in by the 23rd at noon. So in case I didn't make that clear, next week's video, you have to post the answers in the comments. And you have to do it by the 23rd at noon Eastern. So that that way we can go tally them up and get all the names to enter into the raffle and see how many times crew was said yes yeah and and it has to be shared um and, and on the 25th we're most likely going to do um i don't know what do you guys think i put them through in the mediumship class i put them through an exercise that i do for forgiveness and healing and i did that what was it last week you just did it because i had to miss it so we gotta do that yeah oh yeah what? it was uh thursday yeah thursday okay last what did you guys think of that i, I liked it did I it think help were either one of you two weren't there, were you? I I couldn't make it Thursday, no. So I, I think oh, that's, that's right. Leanne was wasn't wonderful. there. George, you were there. I was there. It was fantastic. It was good. Okay. Do you guys think that we should do a video on that? Go yeah. through the steps. Yep. Yeah, we can do that. Sure. Okay, so maybe we'll do that on the twenty fifth. And then guess what, you guys? I have had a lot of people talking to me, asking me about, because I've said any spiritual topics, let me know. Right. I have had a bunch of people asking me about Wiccan stuff. Cool. I am going to be honest with you. I don't know a lot about it. So I found a woman that uh, I talked to and I, I like her very much. And she is coming in on the 1st of June. She's third degree from, I think she said the Black Forest clan. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So she'll be coming in on the fourth and we're going to do segments with her. So the first one might be uh, myths versus realities of Wiccanism. I guess you would call it Wiccanism. Is that a word? Wiccanism. Wiccanism. Well, if it's not a word, it is now. Just like, don't take me to my highest point of positivity. It's a word. I made mm -hmm. it. <laughs> we like doing that too. I do. I like making words. 
So with that, I think that we are going to wish you all an amazing evening. From and the crew. yes, from the whole crew. Let us know what you think. You know, if you'd like enjoy tonight's topics, if there's anything we can change, let us know. Yep. Right? Any topics you guys want to talk about too? Like we've got a few more ideas coming up that I think um some people have mentioned and uh you know, we're going to get on those. Too, so. The only question is not accepted at this point due to COVID is our hair. Other than that, we're going to be welcome <laughs> to everything. Leanne can take questions. Yeah. <laughs> and so if anybody... In my eyebrows, I don't want to smear them, so they're be careful. You look fantastic. Yeah, look up. And if anybody would like to kick Leanne, if you live anywhere near her, <laughs> please feel free to do so for me. Sandy, I, my neighbor's watching. She's gonna come over and beat me. I know her. that's not the most spiritual thing, but you know, we'll we'll just set our spiritualism aside for a moment. You're free to kick her. It's all about <laughs> intention. Do it with love. That's all right. we ask. Right. <laughs> Always. All right, everybody. Wishing you a magical week. Look forward to seeing you all next week for forensics okay. and mediumship. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you.